this is a um, little visualization I've been playing with that I was going to talk about some of the features of it. Um, it's delving into some properties of what's referred to as the log normal distribution, which is a um, continuous distribution used in a lot of different areas for data analysis. Um, so what we've got here, the top, this is the um, probability density function of a log normal distribution. Now it's re always related to a normal distribution um, because a log normal distribution is basically the exponential of um, a normal distribution. So what I'm trying to show here is a log normal with some properties that you can vary and I'll show and at the same time show how that's connected to what I'm what I'm calling the underlying normal distribution which um, has a mean and a standard deviation that's tied to the one for the log normal distribution. Um, so what you can do here, um, what I'm showing are a couple of the percentiles. This is Again, this is the log normal distribution. I'm showing the, um, the lower 95th, the upper 95th, the median, um, the mean, and the mode and you can move your mouse around at all these little dudes um, to get some more information on it. Um, here, here, here. This, you can do the same thing on the normal distribution. But also what you can do, if you, there you click, you can change it and see the impact of changing. For example, in this case, the lower 95th, how that affects um, the mean, all the other parameters, and again, how it affects those properties of the underlying normal distribution. You can go both ways, moving the mean of the normal over 95th. You can do the same thing with the lines. They're a little harder to grab. Um, uh, did I get one? Yeah, I'm going to get it right now. Um, and also, you might have noticed here, as you move the mouse along the probability density function, I'm showing, first of all, the the value here along the axis, the x-axis, and that p, which is the um, cumulative distribution function at that value. So that p that I'm spitting out there is the probability that this sample from this distribution is at or below that p value that I'm referring to there. So for example, at the median, when you get up to the median, it'll be 50% because that's the definition of the median. 95th up here, See about the 95. The lower 95th should be the 5%, etc. The same goes on here. Um, you can also change the values directly in these inputs here. And what you can do, if you click in there, all you have to do is move the mouse up and down. Um, there, you'll see some of the tooltips pop up because I'm still kind of fighting with those. They kind of show up at the wrong time because your mouse might go over them for one of the other elements um, when you're doing something else. You can do the same thing for the standard deviation of the log normal distribution. What I'm showing over here um, is the formula for the probability density function for both the log normal and the normal distribution. Um, and what I'm do I have a little line that sits there and points to the curve, kind of to say, hey, this is this is what the PDF is. As you move along, um, there's no meaning to what that particular point it's pointing to. It's just supposed to be pointing to the curve. I've just got it hitting a value of basically about 100 pixels over here, wherever that happens to hit the curve. Um, you notice that formula there. It looks, I think it looks pretty nice um, in the sense of the typesetting because I'm using something called MathJax for that, which is basically using um, what's in Tech, the Tech Mathematics typesetting language. Um, it, um, this is all um, SV, um, CSS and um, HTML that it generates um, for all the maybe some SVG too, um, which I think looks really nice. Um, it makes some AJAX calls when it renders, so it takes a second for the equation to pop up. Now, another thing that you can do with this thing, with with this MathJack stuff, since it's just HTML, there's a way to hook in and insert CSS um, IDs, so that you can you can refer to specific elements of the equation wherever they are. And the way I've kind of played with doing this first is. Um, when you like mouse over this guy, 
the, this is the um, standard deviation of the underlying normal distribution, you can see that it's um, highlighted the sigma in wherever it appears in the two equations. And the same thing for the mean, which here, if you do the same thing here, the, the, um, the mean of the underlying normal appears in two places, over here and over here, and so I'm just trying to give a little highlight that says, hey, here's where this thing's being used in that equation. Um, the same for the standard deviation here. Um, and actually, these, the parameters of the log normal are calculated from the parameters of the normal, but they're not um, strictly, you don't see them straight here. There is a, there's a closed form formula for both the mean and the standard deviation of the log normal in terms of the underlying normal um, for the mean. Let me see if I spit it out. Yeah, you can see, I'll say what it is. It's basically the exponential of um, a mu sub n plus one half times the square of the standard deviation. The one, there's a, a formula for the standard deviation of the log normal in terms of the standard in terms of the parameters of the normal. But it's a little more complicated and I didn't spit it out here. Um, but it, it's not hard, it's just a little more involved. Um, and again, what I'm trying to show here is kind of to help see the connections between all the parameters of these distributions and that are kind of paired together. Um, and maybe also, if you get a chance, learn a little bit about some basic statistics about what showing what the mode is uh, which again it's the highest point of the probability density function there might be more than one in general but in, in this case there's only one so for example the median which is the point at which half the curve is above and half the area under the curve is below um, for, the, for the normal since it's symmetric it's the same as the mean and the which is actually the same as the mode. So those are all three really on top of each other and I only show the mean. Um, so you can kind of move it around, do some stuff. Um, if the curve gets too far out here, you can tell it to rescale the views to fit them in because um, I could change the scale on the fly, but I decided not to because I wanted to be able to preserve and, or make it easier to see how you, you're, the changes you're making are um, impacting the curve. Otherwise, you might not see any difference if I was scaling the x-axis here as you went. So, there you can play around with it. And again, the point is just to kind of show some more properties or look into some of the properties of the log normal distribution and its associated normal distribution. Let me see if I'm dragging that a little bit. It's still very much a work in progress. I'm working through some things. Again, with fighting through the tooltips, it's nice that they show up. I'm just using the general jQuery tooltip stuff, um, even though I'm inserting some HTML so that I can do this stuff there. But the formatting's not that great. And um, again, sometimes they keep showing up when you don't want them to. So I'm working through some of the events on that. And if I keep poking at this, um, maybe do some better stuff with the responsive design, which is can be a pain. So there you go. Um, again, still playing with this thing. Maybe you can play with it yourself and learn a little bit about the log normal and the normal. And let me know if you have any questions or anything. And see you later.